if all this was was a means to get abortion outlawed, and once that happens, the help and the support that Christians are giving women just dries up, then that means we're everything they accused us of. Let's not let that happen. We need to put our arms around these mothers that are in crisis. We need to put the, our arms around these people that have suffered through the, the turmoil and the evil that is abortion. We need to do the best that we can to support these women, offer help, offer our aid, offer advice, and if nothing else, offer the gospel. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Another argument that is often used is, and this is a very easy one to dismiss, so it won't take me much time at all. What about rape and incest? So these are, this is a good question if given in the right context, but most of the time it's not a good question. And the reason is because the person making it doesn't actually care about the rape or incest. They're just trying to put that forward to make you look bad. Because I actually believe that rape and incest are not good reasons to avoid an abortion. However, most of the time when they bring it up, they don't care about that. And the reason that they don't, I'm not saying that they don't care about women that, are, that have been raped or, or had incest thrust upon them. What I am saying is they're just saying that to justify all abortion, and that doesn't make any sense. So the way to rebut that is ask them, would you be okay with outlawing all abortion that is not rape or incest? And if they say no, and most of them will, then say, well, then let's not bother with that. That's, that's a side issue for the time being. Because if that's not the case, then they don't really, that's not the point they're trying to make. It makes no sense to justify all abortions on the grounds of rape and incest, especially when considering that they constitute only about 1-2% to of all abortions. It makes no sense to make that the rule or the, the reason that you have this thing that is legal. That's an illogical argument. And so the correct way to respond to that is, okay, um, would you be okay with getting rid of all abortions that don't fall within those categories? And if they say no, you know that they're not actually trying to make that argument. If they say yes, if they say, yeah, I think that abortion's horrible, it should just be in cases of rape or incest. All you have to bring up is, Bad behavior by one person does not justify another, because if they do take that stance, they probably do care about the life inside the mother. They probably actually do care about the baby. They think that that life has value at some level. Now, rape is something that has personally affected my family. It's horrible. It devastates people. Some people never recover. And frankly, I think it's the only crime that is worse than murder. I think that you should be able to have a punishment beyond the death penalty uh, for rape, but that's you know not really the way the legal system works. But my point is, I think that that's the most heinous crime a person can engage in. But no matter how terrible it is, it's not the baby's fault. Baby didn't do anything. Baby didn't ask to be conceived that way. So as wrong and as horrible as that is, you don't take that out on the baby. And there's a lot of reasons from a mental health perspective that shows that it's actually better for the mom if she carries the baby to term and gives birth. Because abortion just piles on the mental health crisis and the mental health nightmare that is having a baby that was raped. I've heard so many people say, or, sorry, being raped and having the rapist baby. They'll say, well, she shouldn't have to have the rapist baby. Well, is the baby the, the racist? Like, the baby didn't do anything. And on top of that, who says she has to raise it? Put it up for adoption. We've already made that case tonight. The baby didn't do anything wrong. And so you can't hold it accountable for that. And incest is a really weird one because I assume that when what they're talking about there is it's a incestuous rape. Those are rare, but they do happen. But I mean, like, why not just throw that in the rape category? Like, I'm not saying that I, I think that it's weird to bring that argument up. I'm saying it's weird to bring it up separate from rape. Like, why wouldn't that just be rape? Because if it is consensual incest, I really don't understand what the purpose of aborting the baby is at that point either. That doesn't really make sense to me. But anyway, so those are some of the uh, the big arguments that are, you know, that, that you have to be able to counter if you're going to have this discussion. And I'm glad that I was able to bring that guide to, to you. But 
I think what's most important here and the thing that we need to be most aware of is we need to keep doing all we can to help women and children. Because if we don't continue to do that, even after Roe's been overturned, and even if you live in a state like Alabama, like I assume most of my listeners are right now, even if you live in a state where abortion is effectively banned now, good for you, that's an amazing blessing. But if because of that, we throw our hands over, it's like, yes, we did it, we're done. All right, peace out. Good, good job, everybody. Everyone go home. If that is the case, then literally every single accusation that people made against Christians and saying we don't do enough about the church, we only care about the women, uh, we only care about the babies in the womb, we don't really care about the women involved in these pregnancies. If that's what happens, then they were right. If all this was was a means to get abortion outlawed, and once that happens, the help and the support that Christians are giving women just dries up, then that means we're everything they accused us of. Let's not let that happen. We need to put our arms around these mothers that are in crisis. We need to put our arms around these people that have suffered through the, the turmoil and the evil that is abortion. We need to do the best that we can to support these women, offer help, offer our aid, offer advice, and if nothing else, offer the gospel. And if we do that, then we are actually fulfilling what the Bible asks us to do, to take care of other people. And so I really think that it's important that we keep that in the forefront of our mind, that it's not just about making sure that all 50 states outlaw abortion, because that's very good. Like, we do want abortion to be outlawed. But we also want to help the people that would be put in such a, a corner that are filled, they're so trapped and there's no way out that they would consider something as evil and horrible as abortion. Because that's where most of the women are. Even most of the women that are extremely pro-choice and, and the shout your abortion people, there may be some that are so far gone that they don't even like connect the dots there. But there are an awful lot of women that whether they even realize it or not are carrying around a lot of, of grief and a lot of the, I mean, just to be honest, for lack of a better way to put it, just carrying the weight of their sin. And that's something that we as Christians and we as conservatives need to make sure that we're doing an adequate job of helping them in that process. Because ultimately, if we want the government to do less, we have to be willing to do more. If we really care about small government, conserving the Constitution, and making sure that we have all the liberties that we need, we need to make sure we are using that liberty in a positive way that helps our community get to the point to where no one even really sees the need for government to get involved in things anymore. Because the average person, the average Christian, is doing what they can to help anyway. And so why get the government involved? Everything's being taken care of on their own. Now, it's never going to be perfect. East of Eden, there never is anything that, that does. But the point is, we need to do everything we can to make that case so that the government feels less obligated to do things. Most importantly, far more than just getting our political agenda and our smaller government, it fulfills the message of the gospel. To convince you to like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'm about to do some political impersonations. First up, Bernie Sanders. It is immoral that in this country, the top 1% of YouTubers get all the likes and subscriptions. John Kerry. Please remember to ring the notification bell. President Joe Biden. If you like the show, call the TV Guide and tell them. You know, the thing. Kamala Harris. Batman would want you to like and subscribe! <laughs>